What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Daniel and welcome back to our video today. I'm doing a small NASCAR silly season update where I'm going to recap everything that's happened over the course of the last couple weeks and talk about some of the big silly season rumors going around. So anyways, let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. Let's first take a look at some of the things that have been confirmed over the last couple weeks. It was announced last Tuesday that Chase Briscoe would officially be joining Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025, driving the number 19 car. He'll spot be sponsored by Bastard Shots for select races throughout the 2025 seasons. Unclear if Mahindra is going to be coming over to sponsor for next year and James Small is going to be the crew chief starting in 2025. Then it was confirmed in recent weeks that Kyle Busch would be returning to Richard Childress Racing. There have been some talks, conversations about maybe Kyle Busch leaving RCR at the end of this year, but they have extended him through at least next year. He could technically be a free agent at the end of the 2025 season, but Kyle Busch will stay at RCR in 2025. Then there was a lot of talk and rumors surrounding Eric Ombro and whether or not Eric Ombro was going to be staying at JGR. But Joe Gibbs Racing confirmed recently that Eric Ombro would be still at Joe Gibbs Racing through the rest of 2024. Though he is currently on suspension, but he's expected to return at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He got into an altercation with Bubba Wall, so we're going to talk about here a little bit later in this episode. But Eric Ombro is still at Joe Gibbs Racing, despite the rumors that he was let go from the team. He will say at Joe Gibbs Racing. And finally, it was confirmed yesterday that Josh Berry would officially be joining the Wood Brothers in 2025, driving a number 21 car. Motocraft, the quick lane, will be the majority sponsor throughout the 2025 season. It is a multi-year deal for Josh Berry. And we don't know who the crew chief is going to be. Some are speculating it's going to be someone in the Pensy group. But some believe that Ronnie Childers could still have a chance and an opportunity to come over with Josh Berry to the Wood Brothers. But I think there's a really good chance and possibility that Josh Berry will not have Ronnie Childers as a crew chief chief in the 2025 season. So those are the big ones we know officially. Let's now go and talk about all the rumors that have been going around recently. Let's begin by talking about Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson is in line for two rides for 2025, and he's the next one that's expected from SHR to sign a deal. The two organizations that Noah Gregson is linked to are Front Row Motorsports and Richard Childress Racing. Some link him to a third RCR car because of the fact of the Bass Pro Shops connection. However, they were one of the teams originally potentially going to get one of the SHR charters, but with Haas Factory team coming back in 2025, they lost that chance to get that charter. Now, they could potentially still get a charter from a team like Call of Racing, and that's where Noah Grayson could end up. But now the leading theory is that Noah Grayson is going to be headed over to Front Row Motorsports next year. Noah Grayson is one of the best free agents left on the market currently at the moment, and I think Noah Grayson at Front Row would be a really big and massive pickup. It's unclear if Drew Bligaserver would go over, though we know Front Row is expected to hire some of the Stuart Haas racing talent and bring him over. Noah Grayson is in the running, and I think he'll either end up at Front Row Motorsports or RCR in 2025. Another Stuart Haas driver who's currently on the market is Riley Herbst. Now, Riley Herbst said this past week in a National Super Speedway that he has options to run in all three of NASCAR's top divisions. Could run in trucks, could run in Xfinity, and could run in Cup as well. You look at Xfinity, he could go to a team like Joe Gibbs Racing, perhaps, or maybe join the Haas Factory team next year. But the leading theory around Riley Herbst is that he's going to be headed over to 2311 Racing in 2025. Riley Herbst brings the sponsorship and funding, and many have speculated that his father, his father Troy, is funding that charter over to 2311 Racing, while Corey Ham is still also can for that seat next year. Riley Herbst could potentially be headed over to 2311 Racing in the 2025 season. Speaking of 2311 Racing, another driver who could potentially be headed over to that organization in 2025 is Corey Hine. He just most recently made his first start with that organization this past weekend at National Super Speedway and was very impressive. But with Riley Hurts being a lead candidate for that seat as well, another team that he could be linked to is Legacy Motor Club. He is a reserve driver for Legacy Motor Club, and there's a chance that Eric Jones may or may not return to the team in 2025, though many are expecting that Eric Jones is going to be back. But I think if he doesn't go to Legacy, I think there's a chance that Corey Heim could end up at 2311 Racing. Now let's talk about Martin Truex Jr. We do know that Martin Truex Jr. is, is retiring from full-time NASCAR racing at the end of this year. But he said recently that he is expected to return to do select races in 2025. Some races in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, most likely with Joe Gibbs Racing. Also in the Truck Series, potentially as well, potentially with Tricon Garage. 
We do know it sounds like he's also going to run the Daytona 500. Now, with what organization? Most likely 2311 Racing. 2311 Racing is expected to field four cars potentially for the Daytona 500 next year, and Mark Trickson most likely will get that 4C. We do know he will be expected to run select races in 2025. Now, a driver that's always been linked and rumored at one point to come back is Carl Edwards. But Carl Edwards said very recently that he is not returning behind the wheel of a NASCAR Cup Series car. That being said, he is interested in returning to NASCAR as a broadcaster. Carl Edwards loved broadcasting last year when he went in at Darlington, and there's a chance he could come back in a broadcasting role, maybe with NBC, maybe with Fox, or maybe with Amazon or TNT. It'd be really cool to see Carl Edwards come back. He could do that. In 2025. Another driver that is expected though to return to 23 Live Racing in 2025 is Bubba Wallace. He is expected to return to the team and sign a multi year contract extension. This is a contract year technically for Bubba Wallace going into the 2025 season, but Bubba Wallace does have a contract with this team, and I do think he will get this signed in the not so distant future. He brings sponsorship for him from McDonald's, and Bubba Wallace has been a very solid driver. While well, not as good as his teammate Tyler Reddick, he does a really solid job. All all things considered. Nonetheless, Bubba Wallace is expected to sign a multi-year agreement with 23 Lemon Racing in the not so distant future and stick around and sign a multi-year extension. Maybe Kerber should come back as well, but Bubba Wallace will sign a multi-year extension most likely with 2311. Now let's move on and talk about Ford. Front Row Motorsports is expected to be a three-car organization. They have three cars for next year. We know that Todd Gillen is going to be one of the drivers and driving to 38. We do not know the numbers and who the other two drivers are going to be at the moment, but Front Row could be making that announcement here in the next couple of weeks. They are going to get Tier 1 support from Ford and will be a three-car team in the 2025 NASCAR Cup season. They're also expected to have a truck series team once again as well. Maybe Lane Race will be back behind the wheel. One of those drivers who could be joining Front Row Motorsports is Christian Eckes. According to Bob Pockers, Christian Eckes could be a candidate to potentially join Front Row in 2025. This shocks me quite a bit, but it's also not surprising. Christian Eckes has been doing an excellent and very solid job with the McAnally Hilgeman organization group. He's been the fastest driver outside of Corey Heim in trucks and just had a super dominant performance at National Super Speedway. I think he would do a very solid and great job with the team, and there's a great chance he could join them in 2025. Another shocking name that could potentially join Front Row Motorsports in 2025 is Sam Mayer. According to Bob Pocker, Sam Mayer is a candidate to join Front Row Motorsports next season. Sam Mayer is wanting to go Cup Series racing. He's been adamant that he's really frustrated. He's not been considered to move up the Cup next year. Sam Mayer potentially can make that move in 2025. I think Sam Mayer is a very talented race car driver. He's won technically the most races and tied with John Hunter currently are, was one behind him at this point. But Sam Mayer is a candidate for Front Row Motorsports going into 2025. Now let's move over and talk about Trackhouse Racing. Zane Smith could be out of Trackhouse Racing at the end of this season as part of the Trackhouse family, but won't potentially go to one of the, their cars. He is rumored to be potentially head over to Colg Racing in 2025 as Colg and Trackhouse do have a technical alliance. We had heard rumors that Colg maybe was going to sell a charter at the end of the year, but that was confirmed that they are not planning to sell a charter. So they're going to need drivers that bring funding. Zane does have a little bit of funding behind him, and I think there's a great chance and possibility that he can be headed over to the Colg Racing organization in 2025. The driver that is expected to go to that third seat in 2025 is Shane Van Gisbergen. and he is the current favorite to take the third track out seat. Rosh is under a long-term contract with the organization, and Daniel Suarez is expected to sign a multi-year extension with Trackhouse Racing in the not so distant future. SVG is doing a really strong job in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this season, already two victories, and he's the favorite to win this weekend in both the Cup and Xfinity race at the Chicago Street Course. I think he's also been getting better at Owls. He's had 10 top 15 finishes so far, and he's only had four finishes outside of the top 20. He gets better throughout these races. He's also got sponsorship from Red Bull and Weather tech as well svg and wendy's as well by the way svg is a current favorite to move up to the cup series in a third track house seat in 2025 
One team that is expected to not get a charter, though, in 2025 in the Cup Series is Junior Motorsports. Many believe that Junior Motorsports is not going to be going Cup racing at all in 2025. There is a chance they maybe could go part-time, and maybe they could find a way to invest in an organization, but Junior Motorsports is not expected to purchase a charter. They may never go Cup racing in the future. That being said, Junior Motorsports continues to be in talks, conversations, and they always are looking at potentially acquiring a charter. But as of right now, Junior Motorsports is not moving up as of this point to a full-time team in 2025. However, there is a driver that is rumored to potentially be headed over to Junior Motorsports in 2025, and that is Connor Zillage. Connor Zillage is under contract with Trackhouse Racing as a Trackhouse development driver, but it was reported by Adam Stern last week that Connor Zillage is in talks to join Junior Motorsports in the 2025 season. Many believe he can go to the nine-car place, Brandon Jones, but if Sam Mayer does somehow move up to Front Row Motorsports next year, he could take over the one seat. Connor Zilich is a racing prodigy, one of the best talents to come through the ranks in recent years and recent seasons, and Connor has an immense amount of talent. He would be a fantastic candidate, and it would be a great asset to a team like Junior Motorsports. I think he'd be a championship threat and contender instantly. He'd be a road course driver who could win a lot of road races. He's going to run some select races with them here in 2024. It sounds like he will be moving up potentially to Junior Motorsports in 2025, maybe in the future, could go to Hendrick Motorsports as well. Now let's talk about Daniel Hemrick. Daniel Hemrick is not signed for the 2025 season. The speculation is beginning that he may not return to the 31 car in 2025. There is a chance he could be part-time with them or go back down to the NASCAR Xfinity Series with Josh Williams struggling this year. Maybe they move Daniel Hemrick back down because Daniel Hemrick did a better job than Josh Williams has done so far this season. Daniel Hemrick also brings funny, though, so he could be back in the seat in 2025, but currently he is not signed for the 2025 NASCAR Cup Series season. Now let's talk about Cole Custer. Cole Custer is currently the lead candidate to join the Haas Factory team in the Cup Series next year. It would make a lot of sense. Cole Custer does have some funding from the Haas group, and also Cole's father, Joe, is expected to be running this operation all together and basically be running it for the team. Cole Custer has been a really solid driver in Xfinity. I believe he's still currently the points leader right now. And Cole Custer's done an excellent job with the Haas Fat, with the Super Haas Racing Organization. Has a chance to win his second straight championship. I think he's earned a chance and opportunity. And it sounds like there's a really great chance possibly that he'll be joining the Haas Factory team in 2025 in the Cup Series. He's the lead candidate for that ride. Another driver who could potentially join the Haas Factory team in the NASCAR Xfinity Series next year is Harrison Burton. We know Harrison Burton is expected, to, well, we know it's confirmed he will not be back at the Woodboroughs next year as Josh Berry is taking over his seat for 2025. But Harrison Burton's name has been linked to the Haas Factory organization. Harrison Burton brings funding to the table from Dex Imaging. Now, he could also go to Front Row Motorsports next year. That certainly could be an option for 2025. But Harrison Burton also could be headed over to the Haas Factory team and drive him for that organization. I think he'd be a championship contender in Xfinity. I think he'd be doing a lot better in Xfinity. I think he could try to rebuild that program and get better and rebuild his NASCAR career and overall image as well in NASCAR as a driver. Another driver who could be a candidate for the Haas factory team in 2025 is Ryan Priest. Ryan Priest is expected to be the only driver at Suras Racing in the Cup Series that's most likely not going to be full-time in Cup, but he has been linked to the Haas factory team. Ryan Priest does bring a little bit of sponsorship and funding to the table, and he is, in my opinion, a very solid driver. I think Ryan actually is a better driver than people give him out to be. I know he's been kind of struggling so far this season, but I think Ryan Priest is a good driver. He was really good in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and he went to Stuart Haas Racing and struggled a bit. Ryan Priest is not a bad driver. I don't know why people think he is. He can get the best out of equipment and can make people a lot better with these teams. It sounds like Ryan Priest is for sure a candidate to potentially head over to Haas Factory, in 2025. And finally, let's talk about Haley Deegan. It sounds like Haley Deegan, despite the fact that she does have a multi-year agreement with AM Racing, it does sound like her future with AM Racing is in question currently at the moment. She could be out of AM Racing altogether. It was announced earlier this week that Joey Logano would be driving in place for her at the Chicago Street Course. There is a chance that she could go back to AM Racing, but I'll be real and honest with you guys, I think she is done with AM Racing going forward. She has struggled this year. She has 
only had four top 20 finishes so far this year, and their performance just hasn't been there. And while AIM Racing isn't as fast of an organization as other teams, they're expected to run a lot better. She has struggled immensely this year. She has done terrible. Brett Moffitt last year had nine top 10 finishes in the top five. Well, she's only had four top 20 finishes, and I feel like the lack of performance, and she's been underachieving, unfortunately. I like Haley Deegan a lot, and I would love to see her be with this team going forward, but unfortunately, I think that Haley Deegan's time with AIM Racing may be done overall. I think her future in NASCAR is in question. I think she's not going to be back with AIM Racing next year with the lack of performance with the team and organization. We'll see what happens, but her future is definitely in question with AM Racing currently at this moment. So, that is the small NASCAR Silly Season update. I want to thank guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on so if I win a video, does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support on Patreon as well. Let's go below that and comment your thoughts below on today's video. What are your thoughts about this short Silly Season update? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. First of all, I want to wish you guys a happy 4th of July. Hope you're enjoying that time and spending your time with your families. We're also going to have a pain skin video dropping on the channel as well for this weekend's race at Grand Park 165. If any other major news breaks throughout the rest of the week, we'll discuss it here live on the channel. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.